Hello everyone, in this video I will show you guys what's inside this Comdial business phone. Now Comdial is a pretty old brand. I don't even know if they're even still here anymore, but anyway. So the first thing I like to do is I like to remove the front panel. Usually in the front there's a little window and a little paper slip. This is where they can type stuff out. In this case, usually in most cases, line numbers. So there's line one and so on. All printed on this little sheet. It's kind of convenient, kind of neat. They print it out with most likely a typewriter or something. And sometimes underneath that paper panel, there can be screws, but in this case there isn't. So basically, this part of the phone has the actual handset that you hold on to. And clipping it on the back, got ourselves a telephone line, which all it is is just a little latch after I just free up this wire, we could get right to the line. Okay, and to remove, there's a small little tab that holds the plug in place, just press down on it, and let go. And we have ourselves a bundle of telephone cable. And our second component that we remove is the wire that is attached to the handset. And it just comes off like so. Sometimes these coil cords, I've seen a lot of these on eBay selling for a decent amount of money, but I don't know if anyone has actually bought any of these. I think these are just more like people like to list them a lot, but I don't know how many people actually buy them. So, our next step is to remove this plastic backing. In most cases, it just pops right out. Let's see if it, we can do it for this one. Looks like we can't. So, all we got to do is remove two screws. One here and one here. And this back piece should come right off. Okay, now that we have removed those two screws, this back panel should come right off. We just need to go at an side and pop them out. And there we go. Easy as that. So this piece is just what appears to be black plastic. I don't know what kind of a likely ABS, so this would go with your black plastic. And we got ourselves a base here that should also be solid black as well. And to remove these, all we gotta do is remove one, two, three, four, five. Looks like five screws is all we need. And we have removed all five screws. And the back panel just pops right off, no latches or anything. It's pretty good. And on the back here, once again, nothing else. Just a nice piece of black plastic. And we got ourselves a pretty nice board here. So we got ourselves a piece of foam. This most likely covers the speaker to prevent it from coming out through the other side, most likely. So, yeah. There's just four screws holding that speaker in place. We're going to go ahead and remove the four screws that hold that in place and we'll get to the good stuff. Okay, I have removed two metal plates. These might be useful for something, I don't know. So it might be worth holding on to these. These are nice little metal brackets, so yeah, might be a good idea to hold on to these. But the nice thing about these speakers is that the screws end up popping on and attaching to the magnet on these speakers. So as you can see, there's every speaker has a magnet, so you could actually take them apart and get a magnet out of it and put that with your magnets, if your scrapyard actually buys them. Mine doesn't. Mine's super basic. They just sell ferrous metals. So, again, here's a speaker. There should be a nice copper coil and maybe some wires leading up to it along with a wire connector along with some wire connecting the 
board and the speaker itself. So yeah, nothing too much. And we got ourselves just our good stuff here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove, looks like the microphone on the side. Simply pull up on the blue connector. Like so. And, well, didn't want to pull up, but anyway, there's some nice wire. All right, so I finally got this worked out. So I have removed a itty bitty little connector. All of us is it was just pressed in, so I just pulled out. And it's just a little wire. And there's this board here connects to the display, which is in the front. Of course, this is the back for the speaker. But anyway, our next step involves the removal of this small screen here. So it's just held in place by four screws. So let's go ahead and see what we got underneath and what we have after we remove it. Okay. And like I said, this is the screen. Now, there isn't much to it. There's two little IC chips that are very easy to remove, as well as some very light gold flashing. I'm judging whether it's worth it processing or not to me. I'm not sure or if it's just worth just removing the chips and going to something that has higher gold value. But to remove this front panel here, it's pretty simple. So I'm just going to use these short, stubby wire cutters. And I'm just going to grab one of these metal tabs, which there happens to be six of them. One there, two there, and so on. There's six of them. I'll basically go and stick my plier right on, squeeze and twist until what looks like the hole here, it's bent out so we unbend it until it fits into the hole, repeat for every single one. Ones that are hard to get is usually near the edge, so I just grab the edge and squeeze to flatten it that way. Hmm. Now this last one's somewhat difficult, but usually I'll have enough tabs removed that I can just simply pop it out and it'll just come out easily. So I get a little flat head, stick it in a space in between the two pins, and twist, and it gets freed. And like so. We have our parts removed. So this is the metal outside. The LCD screen, which I may have indium, so save it. And we got ourselves these rubber connectors that connect the board to this display. They don't have any value to them. They're just like rubber. So yeah, this piece you want to keep. This piece will be steel. And this board will have gold and chips to remove. So now we got down to the base part here. We're just gonna go and remove any visible screws we can find. Since there are none, there is one here, but that's just holding this little receiver spring in place. These are actually held in with pins, like plastic, that have been flattened using heat. So these are just held in place with plastic rivets. So to remove these, be sure that you are wearing safety glasses when you're doing this. You'll want to stick your flathead and twist and pop out all those rivets. There's not that much to it. It makes a lot of noise, but the only way to get these out and like so the board comes right out. So this piece is just plastic, assorted plastics. Uh, nothing too special, just black plastic with some rubber that is non-recyclable. Now these, there's these little buttons. This is multicolored plastic, so this is still resellable. It's just not as high of a value. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is for this backing. Just remove that screw and maybe a little spring and you'll be good to go. 
And now we've got the board itself. So this board here doesn't have that much on it, but there is some good stuff here. Since this is a little older board, there's some better quality chips. So we got, of course, our big bulky black chips here. But we also got a couple smaller ones, like one there, one there, along with another one here, here. Three in a row that are fairly nicely sized, but that's pretty much all there is for IC chips. Flip it over, nothing here except these little gold itty bitty little gold LEDs. I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. Try to get better close up pictures and I'll show you. But those little squares, they are all gold LEDs. They have 1% gold, 1 to 2% gold by weight, so not well, not much. You can still save up enough of them and get a decent reward from your troubles. So if you collect 100 grams of these, and you can, can find quite a few of these, you can get about a gram of gold. So that's always just an estimate, it's always up to your own research to discover how much is truly valuable. There we go. You can see those. These are all gold LEDs. And they're not so much on that side, but all line in there are all gold LEDs. Those things that are labeled DS, DS26, DS18, DS11, those are all gold LEDs. And those are what you want. So, yeah, not a bad board. There's a lot of little MLCCs to remove if you're into that. Even an old transformer and inductor there that you can remove to get some copper. Uh, there's some little crystal oscillators that have good gold value. In this case, silver. See, there's one there. And one there. So, definitely worth saving. We got the chip here. Two of them. Nothing too valuable for other than that, except a little bit of gold plate. And a little bit of wire here and there. So now we got ourselves the actual handset. So most cases they're very hard to get to because they end up just being glued together, which is what I don't like about them. But this actually has screws, so we can kind of see what we got inside. So we got our two screws done, and don't want it to come out. But we got ourselves our hammer. I'll be sure to keep all this glass away because we don't want it to shatter. Put this one side. And the other side. And open it up. Here we got ourselves another piece of black plastic. And a little speaker. And this should have some nice copper coils inside, so it's worth removing. And also, this piece here is aluminum. So, save that. Just a little band of aluminum going along the side. Let's get these out of the way. But if you want, you could even sell this as copper mode, copper bearing if you wanted to. Uh, and we got two screws here. There we go. So it looks like steel. Could be aluminum. Let's see. But most likely steel because it has to have weight. No, it's actually aluminum. So there's a nice little piece of aluminum. Some handsets do have lead weights in them. This happens to be an aluminum one because this is a newer compared to like a 1980s or something handset. So these have to have lead free components. So this is aluminum. And on the other side, we got ourselves one, 
two. Three. Four screws, which help us undo another second piece of aluminum. And a little transducer or microphone. So, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, that's pretty much all there is. Okay, so all we got here was a nice stack of plastic. A little bit of wire here and there, not too much, about what's to be expected in a typical handset slash office phone system. Uh, and two little boards. Keep in mind there could be more. Just depends on your model. And yeah, pretty good, nice high grade boards. Looks like a little display. Two little copper bearing motors, just copper bearing material in general, and our three part box. The first part on here contains all of our gold plated connectors. So I've already snipped off the two wires, and they've got their connectors here. So there's four little connectors and one socket, two pieces of cast aluminum, and a whole bunch of steel. With some little screws and some brackets and spring there. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is in that calm dial phone from an office. I hope you found that video interesting and even useful, you know, because it's always neat to see what's inside things and what values they have. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys again soon.